In this video we will learn how to build grid structures and trusses uh, out of spline lines. Okay, let's start with a simple line. In my command panel under um, create uh, and shapes I found my uh, tool line and I just want to do this uh, now with my keyboard entry and I start with position 0, 0, 0 in x, y and z direction. I go into add point. My second uh, vertex point will be uh, on position, on y position uh, 60 centimeters and my uh, third point uh, on uh, 100 centimeters and I just um, finish the whole thing, go into zoom extend all and this is my line and in my line I can obviously cha choose all my vertex point and if I go on right mouse click I see that there are so far smooth vertex points I would like to uh, go to um, uh, choose Bezier vertex points and what I can do right now I can just uh, move them and uh, go one step back uh, I just want to move this middle point I can just uh, change my uh, uh, handles and uh, change the shape of my uh, my line and what I also want to do is under interpolation I would like to choose adaptive so my line is really nice and uh, nice and smooth. Okay I want to copy my line and for this I just go into edit and uh, in edit I go into duplicate and uh, away and in my way tool I just want to have six, uh, six of these blind and copy and then go into preview and I just say I want to have a distance of, uh, of eight centimeters this looks good and if you don't have this uh, toolbar like uh, like me right now there's one thing I think for be beginners it's quite nice if you go in uh, this menu you can change it from workspace default to default with enhance a menu and so uh, you have the whole thing 3D Studio organized slightly differently and you have all these menus where you have nice pictures and it's probably easier to understand also the way this is uh, um, uh, organized. I will now choose my first line and attach all the other lines and I just go into attach uh, multi and just choose string A all these lines and so all these uh, lines, these splines are in one line so I can go into splines by one, two, three and can still uh, uh, change the settings. I can uh, just say this is a vertex point and I would like to move it a little bit down and I can obviously also just say that I add um, uh, FFD box and uh, just change the control points uh, like this. I will just move this a little bit up and the other one uh, move a little bit uh, to the left so that definitely you can definitely transform the whole thing in different kind of ways. Okay what we want to look at is how to um, uh, how to produce grid structures and there are uh, several ways, ways of doing this. The first and most simple option is uh, just uh, that you just can go into your line uh, line hierarchy and then you just switch on enable in the window and enable in viewport and you can just choose between two kind of um, shapes and the one is a radial shape so you can give this uh, uh, a thickness of uh, one centimeter and then you can uh, just um, make it more smooth and with sides or can just reduce it to a, tri a triangle or uh, or hexagon for example. You can also go to rectangular and uh, then here you ha again have to uh, choose the length and you have to choose uh, the width and you can also turn these, uh, turn these bars. Okay that's a really simple uh, option with two different kind of shapes. Uh, you can also do something different. You can just add um, extrude modifier and um, obviously can uh, adjust uh, the segments and uh, the height and then on top you uh, attach uh, a shell, modif uh, shell modifier. The advantage of this is you can just uh, define the thickness in 
both direction into inner amount and outer amount, which uh, sometimes can be quite uh, can be quite handy. What you can see is that it's really important on which kind of sub-object level you um, you add your new modifier. And this is, for example, now under my FFD box. And uh, uh, if I just pull it up over my FFD box, then you can see that it uh, it becomes uh, smaller. And this is definitely the, the uh, dimensions we uh, we need. So it's really important that uh, uh, you know where you uh, put your um, put your mod modifier. And uh, it's also a big advantage of 3D Studio that you can play with this. If you just go into our helpers and to tape and then um, three dimensional settings and vertex point and g I go into measure then you can see that it now measures 2.15 uh, centimeters and that's exactly the length we add in our shell modifier so just be aware of uh, on which hierarchy in your sub object level you uh, attach your modifier we will now look at the sweep modifier, which is a really powerful tool because uh, here you can uh, choose uh, the shape of your uh, grid structure. And for this, I will uh, just um, delete my FFD box. Uh, the reason for this is just the FFD box is related to my um, uh, selection underneath. For example, if I go into a vertex point and I just choose these vertex points and I go one uh, level higher, then you can just see that the FFD box is just uh, uh, reacting to my uh, selection. And uh, this is uh, actually uh, quite nice, but it just makes it probably a little bit more complicated right now. What you uh, can do is you can just right mouse like, uh, right mouse click copy the modifier and just attach it a little bit later on, or you can just uh, do uh, a helper dummy like this one, for example, and then say uh, right mouse click on my modifier that you want to uh, paste this and then you can just uh, take it from this modifier later on if you uh, want to do this. Okay, uh, here we go and uh, I will just add my sweep modifier in my modifier menu, sweep modifier and what we can see is uh, we have different kind of shapes we can uh, select actually and uh, for example this is um, a T section, and you can uh, choose a bar, you can choose uh, an angle, and all these uh, these things. Um, that's probably a little bit too big, like uh, the other ones too. If I just make this a little bit smaller, then you can see uh, the profile. I would like to start with my uh, T uh, T profile, and I just choose three centimeters by. Uh, two centimeters, a really small one actually. I think the dimensions uh, I use are quite small. You can also uh, change uh, the radius like two millimeters and the thickness also like two millimeters. So you can adjust this quite well. You also have the uh, uh, possibility to mirror this in uh, X and Y directions, uh, X and Z directions. You can't see anything because it's symmetrical right now. You can um, move it uh, in X direction, you can move it in Y direction, go back right now, and you can adjust it to the pivot point. Now it's at the center of the pivot point, you can have it above the pi uh, pivot point or underneath the pivot point, left and right. These are all things you can actually uh, uh, do with your, um, with your speed modifier. One other thing is quite nice, you can uh, choose your own sectioning uh, shape. If I go into shape and, for example, uh, use these, uh, I take this star, then I can just uh, select my object again, go into sweep modifier, and uh, instead of uh, built in section, I can use uh, custom check section, pick my section. You can just see that I just use my star as a section. You can definitely uh, uh, change this um, shape and uh, and then uh, apply it again. It will have an impact on my uh, sweep modifier. Okay, I will go back into build and section. And um, what I would like to do now is I would like to um, attach substructure. And uh, at the end of the day, I also would like to give this substructure, substructure a different uh, dimension. 
Okay, for this I go into my line um, and um, into my sub-object hierarchy and I see these vertex points and um, I would like to have a substructure uh, more dense than only uh, three, uh, three bars and for this I can just go into my segments. I just select my segments and I can just uh, divide this in my hierarchy. I can go on divide and then you can see that I can divide my uh, segments and it's obvious that this is not really symmetrical right now. If you want to have it symmetrical then uh, of course you have to choose uh, the whole length and probably delete these uh, vertex points before. Or just try one thing, probably uh, I'm not really sure if this is working. I just choose all my all my segments and uh, afterwards I go into uh, divide by six and this also looks um, looks quite well. On my top level in line uh, there's one function actually also on the other levels uh, that's uh, the function create line and I just can uh, create lines uh, between uh, new lines between these vertex points. For this I have to switch on my uh, snap toggle, right mouse click, uh, vertex selected and then you can see that I can just um, add new lines between my vertex points and uh, you can do it on this level. You can also just go uh, back and just add a new um, edit spline and then you're probably a little bit more flexible. You can switch it on and off and if I now go again into create uh, create line then I just draw new spline lines, right mouse click, I will deselect it uh, between my uh, vertex points. You can do it on all levels, I just do it now on my level uh, vertex points, vertex level and so on and so on. There's probably one thing I could have done better. Uh, my initial type uh, was uh, linear in terms of create line. I think it's probably better and more smooth if you go to busy and uh, now I ch uh, change it to uh, busy and uh, this will cause um, uh, a more round and smooth uh, smooth line between my vertex point. We can just see later on that the first lines are now done uh, with corner types and now these are done with smooth and nice uh, uh, busy vertex points. If I go now into show end result toggle on, uh, the thing is quite uh, expected then you can see that my sweep modifier already um, applied the same dimension to my uh, substructure but what we at the end of the day want to do is we just want to give this a different dimension. Okay, what we do is uh, I just go and uh, show end result toggle off. I just uh, uh, go into my edit spline on uh, spline level. I choose with uh, my string, uh, uh, with holding my string key, all these uh, lines, these splines, and uh, after selecting all of them, I go into detach. And here I can just detach it to a new uh, shape and I just call this shape uh, substructure. And uh, here we go. So we have now, we still have my sweep and we have these uh, uh, lines as a new, um, as a new editable uh, spline with uh, no sweep modifier anymore. But uh, now we can just attach a new sweep modifier just go into attach and uh, into my uh, modifier hierarchy I go into sweep modifier I apply the sweep modifier and of course it's uh, much too big I can now choose uh, new dimensions probably two by one centimeter also a radius of uh, uh, one centimeter really really small actually and uh, one centimeter I zoom in a, in a little bit and uh, for example I now can just uh, mirror this uh, this thing. I can see what it does if I change my uh, um, alignment to the pivot point and um, I just choose this one and I can just adjust it in terms of uh, in terms of the height like this. And now you can see that both uh, structures are completely uh, uh, that they have their own dimensions and I can just change these dimensions. 
At the beginning I thought actually that I could um, just paste my uh, FFD box uh, onto uh, my uh, geometry again. This was <laughs> definitely a mistake. Uh, I think this uh, doesn't work so well. So um, what uh, you can do is you can uh, just add a new FFD box on one shape and just uh, use these control points and uh, uh, deform it, uh, switch on my, um, um, my uh, snap toggle like, like this and that's the first one I just um, deform a little bit and you can now just right mouse click um, copy this and I just choose my um, my substructure and I go into paste instance and you can just see that this is a good way of uh, using your FFT modifier so while working on this you really have to keep an eye on uh, your modifiers that the whole thing doesn't get uh, muddled up but uh, this is definitely something you can uh, you can do. If I now go into the control points of my FFT box um, then you can see that it changes both my substructure and my main structure and I think this is already quite uh, quite good. One thing is not perfect with my FFT box because my FFT box is uh, above my sweep modifier so it also mod uh, distorts uh, and modifies my sweep so I just pull it one hierarchy lower under my sweep modifier which works actually quite well with this shape and I'll just do it again here. I just move it underneath and we just see uh, that this is not really successful because uh, it uh, reacts to uh, my um, edit spline. I could imagine that here it's probably still uh, um, I have still a selection going on and I just uh, had my spline selected. I just uh, uh, select edit spline again. I switch on my show end result toggle on and now it's working so really keep an eye on that uh, with your FFD box you um, uh, have uh, nothing selected in your sub-object uh, hierarchy.